Welcome to AminAcademy.com in physics regarding specific heat capacity of monoatomic, diatomic and polyatomic gases. First, we will discuss about specific heat capacity of monoatomic gases. The molecules of monoatomic gas have three degree of freedom. That means three directions it may move. The average energy of a molecule at temperature T is 3 by 2 kBT. The total internal energy of a molecule is 3 by 2 kBT into Na. That means our got our number. The molar specific heat at constant volume Cv is for an ideal gas that is Cv mono atomic gas equal du by dt. du divided by dt equal 3 by 2 rt. For an ideal gas Cp minus Cv equal to r. We know the relation where Cp is molar specific heat at constant pressure. Thus, Cp equal to 5 by 2 R. This is the first relation. Specific heat capacity of diatomic gases. The molecules of a monoatomic gas have diatomic gas, not di. Diatomic gas have 5 degree of freedom. 3 translational and 2 rotational. The average energy of molecule at temperature T is 5 by 2 kBT. The total internal energy of a molecule is 5 by 2 kBT into Na. The molar specific heat at constant volume Cv is for an ideal gas equal that is Cv mono diatomic gas here. Diatomic gas is 5 by 2 RT for an ideal gas Cp minus C V equal to R, where Cp is a molar specific heat at constant pressure, thus Cp equal to 7 by 2 R. Next, specific heat capacity of a polyatomic gas. In general, a polyatomic molecule has three translational, translational, three rotational degree of freedom and a certain number f of vibrational modes. According to the law of equiparitation of energy, it is easily seen that one mole of such a gas has, that is u equal, internal energy equal, 3 by 2 kBT plus 3 by 2 kBT plus f kBT into Na. Therefore, Cv equal 3 plus fr. And C V equal 4 plus F into R. Then gamma ratio between C P by C R. Equal. Or F from this relation you can find gamma also. The law of equiparition of energy can be used to, to determine the value of specific heat capacity for solids. For solids, the volume change is negligible and hence can be ignored to reduce the equation into simple term that is C is the molar specific heat capacity of the solid. Matter can be divided broadly into three states. We know that solid, liquid and gases. Their physical states can be interchanged by providing the 
required temperature and pressure, their equilibrium points can also be changed the same way. To increase or decrease the temperature of any kind of matter, it needs an external source of energy. When gases are heated, the temperature change is minimal. But there is a prominent change in other factors. These factors are pressure and volume. The specific heat capacity can be defined as the amount of energy provided to a unit mass of a substance to raise the temperature by 1 degree Celsius. Now we will discuss about specific heat capacity of solids. Solids are forms of a matter having characteristics like strong forces of intermolecular interaction. That's why the matter be a solid state. Rigidity, proper shape, structure, etc. Solids can be heated so that capacity of specific heat for solids can be determined. The SI units of specific heat capacity is joules per kg per Kelvin, degree Kelvin. The specific heat capacity of a solid is defined as the amount of energy provided to a unit mass of any solid substance to that its temperature is raised to 1 degree Celsius. To determine the specific heat capacity, we will have to make use of the law of equiparitation of energy. This law states that for a system in the thermal equilibrium, there will be a certain amount of average energy for each degree of freedom a molecule has. <coughs> for example, a gas molecule moving in three dimensional space has three coordinates so that the value of so that uh, value of degree of freedom for that molecule has three. Let us consider by any solid having n atoms. Each atom is allowed to move freely but only in one coordinate axis that is in one dimensional space. The expression for the total energy U is given as U equal to 3 kBT Na equal 3 RT. We will we will use the equation for the first law of thermodynamics is given by delta Q equal to delta U plus PdV that is internal energy plus work done. The first law states the energy cannot be created or destroyed. It can only be converted from one form to another. Here PV can be eliminated as the volume change is negligible for solids. For solids by heating volume change is very less compared to original volume, so we had we can eliminate PV term. Therefore, the expression for molar specific heat capacity, that is heat capacity calculated for one mole of a solid will be C equal to dQ by dt, that is du by dt. Now, where C equal to 3R, which is equal 24.94 joules per Kelvin per mole. Here C is molar specific heat capacity where Q is heat given and delta D is the temperature change. The heat capacity is more or less an intrinsic property. This means that it is an attribute of any particular substances. The heat capacity is calculated with the help of calorimeter. The bomb calorimeter always indicates the constant volume values. Another type of calorimeter known as the coffee cup calorimeter is associated with finding heat capacity of a constant pressure. Now we will discuss about specific heat capacity of water. Liquid like water have fewer forces of intermolecular attraction compared to a solid. Intermolecular attraction is very high in solids compared to water. Liquids do not have a definite shape, but they take the shape of and size of the container they are in. The concept of equiparitation, equiparitation of energy is used to calculate the expression for the specific heat capacity of water. The specific heat capacity of water is defined as the amount of energy required that is given to a unit of any 
liquid so that the temperature of the liquid is increased by 1 degree Celsius. The chemical The chemical constituents of water include two components namely hydrogen and oxygen which are present in the ratio of 2 is to 1. The ratio specific it spe specifies that one molecule of water will have two atoms of hydrogen and one atoms of oxygen making a total of three atoms. So these three atoms will be free to move across three dimensions. So far we have done about specific capacity of solid liquid gas in terms of equiparitation energy. We have done. Please subscribe our YouTube channel.